Hi again, everybody. So this time we're going to be talking about ButterFS snapshots. Um, what are ButterFS snapshots? ButterFS snapshots are basically one of the biggest features of ButterFS, and what they allow you to do are to snapshot the file system atomically, as it were, as you t when you took the snapshot, right? So every single bit, everything that of how the file system looked when you took the snapshot is saved, okay? Uh, all the files, the content of the files, everything, okay? Permission of the files, all of it, right there in the snapshot. Uh, there are a couple of things you should know about it. Like one, it's not recursive snapshotting. So basically like, uh, for example, um, we made slash home into a snapshot and in here we're going to make a snapshots folder. And when we snapshot slash home, we are not snapshotting uh, the snapshots folder as well and all the other content that's in the snapshots folder because why would you want to do that, right? Um, although it can be a little bit annoying because you know if you want to snapshot, for example, root, um, slash, you know, the entire root of your file system, um, it might be a little bit annoying um, because you wouldn't be able to snapshot home or Etsy or any of the other um, ones that we made, but it can also be a little bit of a space saver too, because you know some there are some things maybe you don't want to have snapshotted, right? If you if you are doing a full file system snapshot, maybe you just say you know I don't want you know slash var cache to be snapshotted uh, because it's just filled with packages from yesterday. I don't I don't need those packages. I run Arch Linux. I need the newest packages, right? Um, what else? What else? Snapshots can also be a little bit of a space issue because there's no way to see exactly how much data they're actually containing. So I'll give you an example. Let's say, um, oh, on my big server, for example, which has you know 20 terabytes of possible storage. Um, let's say I delete um, a terabyte of data. I don't know why I would delete that, but uh, let's say I did. It wouldn't actually free up any space because a lot of the files that I would have to delete to free up that space still exist in the snapshot. So what I'd have to do is go through and delete the snapshots that correspond to that data. Um, that being said, there are also two different ways that you can uh, snapshots take snapshots with ButterFS. One is by using the built-in snapshot utility. Um, the other way is by using Snapper, which is a tool that was built by uh, the SUS project guys. And I actually prefer it, uh, to be honest, for, for managing snapshots. And a lot of the tools that it comes with are actually just really, really cool. So uh, let's take a look at the first snapshot ability, which uh, is just using the built-in one. So let's create a snapshot folder. So MK, oops, I need to be on there. Mader, um, snaps okay and then let's uh, touch a, a file okay and then let's uh, go ahead and uh, btrfs so volume oh sorry snaps snapshot slash home and uh, place that in slash home snaps and then let's do something cool and Date, date, plus percent, um, month, dash, percent, day, dash, percent, year. Okay, and there we go. We just create a snapshot of that in, of that, of what of our home uh, sub volume uh, into that folder. So if we go in and we go see. Uh, snaps into here, you can see, hey, there is the file, and there is also the folder that we had uh, of the snapshot folder, but of course, if we go in here, um, there is nothing, nothing in there, right? Um, so another really good thing to talk about is that snapshots are both delete, uh, treated as a folder, um, but they cannot be deleted like a folder. So as you can see, we just CD it into it like a folder. But if we were to rm, um, rm, uh, rf this file, we can't delete it. Even though we are the root user, we should be able to delete everything as long as it's not an, an immutable file. So um, how do you delete it? Well, you have to use dbtrfs subvolume delete 
uh, command, which will delete it. So there we go. Now we just took a snapshot, deleted it, and all that good stuff. Um, let's just uh, rm tank rf star this whole thing. Cool. Um, so now let's say a look at Snapper. So with Snapper, basically what it will do is you can create snapshots based on timeline rules. You can delete those snapshots also based on timeline rules. You can set up snapshots to be made uh, pre and post updates uh, using type. Uh, you can do dash t type equals, you know, whatever. Um, what else? You can also um, restore files uh, just instantly. Like, you know, with this, the previous way we would have done it, we would have just copied it right out of the the snapshot into our home if we wanted to. Or, heck, we could have actually just, you know, CD everything back back up to the, to the slash, to the home partition if we wanted to. Um, and then, yeah, so um, one thing you want to do, uh, if you are creating the, uh, let's go ahead, yeah, let's just go ahead and create a config for uh, slash home. So snapper taxi home uh, create config and place it in slash home. So there we go. So if we actually LA right now, we can see we have dot snapshots. Uh, just made right in our folder. If we wanted to go in and change any of the timeline rules, uh, we go nano slash etc snapper um, configs home. And actually, let's while we're in here because this is just a demo, let's just uh, go ahead and turn off the um, timeline creation because. Uh, we're getting close to 10 o'clock and it's going to take a snapshot and I want to know the numbers um, of the snapshots we're making and if it's snapshotting in the background it's going to be adding snapshots as we go. Um, so anyways, let's go ahead and uh, create a snapshot. So snapper taxi home create and let's, uh, let's give this one a description of like known good. Okay, or actually, let's just call it nothing. Um, so there we go. We just created a snapshot. If we do snapper taxi home list. We can see we have our current and we have our nothing. Um, and let's go ahead and uh, touch touch uh, some files. And let's make like um, one to, I don't know, 10. Okay, so now we can see that we have a whole bunch of files and uh, let's go ahead and um, uh, snapshot the file system as it looks now. So snap, snap, snapper, taxi home, create, uh, tap B, and after some files. So, there we go, if we were to list it, we can see after some files. Um, now let's just go ahead and, why don't we just go ahead and delete some files. So rm some files. Um, let's go ahead and delete one through five. Ah, oh, I, of course it expanded it for me. Uh, one dot dot five, four, five, whatever. Um, Star. So, oh boy, we you know deleted some files. Maybe, hey, maybe this was a Samba share, and someone deleted some of these files now, and oh my God, they want some of them back. Let's go ahead and you know restore them. So we can see that um, we had nothing in the first one. Oh, we need to. Uh, sorry, we need to snapshot this first. So snap for XC home. Uh, create bad. Um, and if we snap or taxi and this, there we go. So we can see that uh, between we have a bad one, we have some some files made, and we had nothing made. So let's go ahead and undo some of these changes. Actually, let's look at what changed. So let's first snap or taxi home uh, status. And then you would do uh, like 
2 dot dot, two dot, dot 3. And you can see the minuses in the one column on the very beginning say that those were all the files that were deleted by accident. Oh my God, right? Um, now, let's, we want these files back. So let's go ahead and make some of these files again. So, um, un, oh, undo change. There we go. And it created five files, modified zero and deleted zero because it can delete files um, if you weren't specifying them, right? With this command, you can specify uh, specify which files you want, um, but we don't we don't have to worry about that, right? Um, so yeah, if we ls, hey, look, all of our files are back. That's pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> now let's rm all of this. Let's also snap our text c on delete. Big. All right, so we should have deleted everything about the config that we made, all the files, all the snapshots, all everything. We just delete them all. Let's um, go ahead and take a look at how Butterfest can show you the differences of some files, which is really cool. Like if you uh, are taking snapshots of slash Etsy, for example, and you go into slash Etsy, you change some some thing in a configuration file. You're not sure, you know, and then. You apply the changes, you reboot, and then, oh my God, it blows up in your face. This is a way that you can actually see what the changes were made. So let's go ahead and nano some file.txt and let's add some content to it. All right, so, uh, oh, we probably should uh, snapshot this and create a, a config, so snap Create and oh, create and good, cool. And then, uh, so we know that's our known good state. Uh, now let's nano the file and let's add some more on. To it. Okay, and snapper text C home create tech D. Um, also good some changes. Right? Um, so now snapper tech C home list. So now we have our current, we have our known good, and we also have also good, some changes made, okay? So now let's look at what some of those changes were that were made. Let's see how it you know gets displayed. Um, so snapper taxi uh, home diff and uh, I we need one dot dot two and the absolute path of the file that we're looking at. And we can see that there was one added line signified by the plus symbol that's right there. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and uh, now delete these lines, add another change that was bad, and take a look at how it gets displayed. So nano our file, and let's just delete all of it, and we are going to make a bad change to this. Bad. Okay, so upper taxi home. Oh, home create the bad changes. Okay, so now let's take a look at how Snapper will display a Snapper home uh, diff and oh, we should probably list so we know which ones are bad. So let's take a look at two and three. Diff two dot dot three slash home some file. So there we go. And we can see that there were two negative lines, meaning we took them away, and one positive line, meaning it was added changes. 
Uh, and we also have the times of when those changes were made, all that good stuff. Um, so now let's say we want to restore the file uh, the way it was in two to the way to zero, basically uh, snapshot zero, which is always our current uh, current file system, the way it looks uh, right now. So snapper taxi home undo change uh, to dot, dot, zero and home some file uh, undo change. There we go, and you can see it created zero, modified one, and deleted zero. So now, if we cat um, our file again, we have some, when we add some content, and when we add some more content, basically still good after we made the changes, perfect the way it was, okay? Um, so some, some notes that you should also know is that uh, Snapper makes uh, a lot of your snap, makes your snapshots read only. Uh, so you can't really modify them uh, after they have been made, but you can actually still serve them up. So if you have a, um, like say a web server and you have your directory where all your files are being served up from, you can actually serve up that snapshot, which is really cool. Uh, and you can do the same thing with Samba and all that good stuff. Um, so yeah, that is some a cool, quick look at how to do snapshotting on ButterFS using Snapper. Um, oh, I should also mention, um, with all of these snapshot utilities, you can put them into um, some, you know, into bash scripts, and uh, you can say, and then you can alias it as well. So like you can make a bash script that says, uh, create a snapshot with a pre, uh, with the pre type. Uh, so when you do snapper tax C home, you do tac type equals pre. Um, cause there is actually a way you can delete pre, uh, pre snapshots. And then after like a change, you can do post type T post and then snapper will actually take a look at them in the timeline and say, well, Hey, those are the same. I don't really need to keep both copies of those. Um, anyways, but yeah, so you can do, um, uh, pre and your upgrade your upgrade command. So like when Arch Linux, it's like, you know, Pac-Man tech SYU. Um, and then you can alias that to something. And there you go, like pre, pre snapshot, update, post snapshot, right? Uh, and then you can roll back if there's any bad, bad changes. Um, there are also ways I have seen where people actually restore uh, a completely trash system from a snapshot as well. I'll be honest, I've never had those features work for me at all. There is a way to do it um, using the, in like in the init RAM FS, like basically when the system starts booting and starts pulling up everything, it gives you a little countdown that says, hey, do you want to restore a snapshot or your last snapshot or whatever, uh, whatever it is, I forget. And I've never had that work for me. And then there's also a, um, a, a grub version that will, uh, you can change to boot a specific snapshot. And again, I've never had that work for me either. Um, I have seen people also on YouTube uh, basically just go into Grub and they just know the um, the ButterFS subvolume ID and they just change the subvolume ID and it just works for them. Again, I've never had that work happen for me. I've tried it virtually, I've tried it on hardware, I've just never had it work for me personally. I just like to uh, snapshot slash Etsy and you know a few other things slash home, and then if I ever have any problems, I can just restore from there. It's no big deal. And like things like slash user, like again, you know that encompasses user bin and you know all your commands, so you just roll it back. Um, anyways, that's a really quick look at uh, snapshotting and what snapshotting can do for you, and how easy snapshotting is to use in ButterFS. Uh, so that on that note, that is it. Bye guys.